Okay, so uh, I've got no idea what's going on here. But I think I quite like it. Before Pete and Bass would emerge as two of the hottest grind rappers out of the UK at the ripe old age of more than 70 years old. Before Pete and Bass would release songs like The Old Estate, Window Frame Cypher, and Speeding. Before Pete and Bass would have 5,000 followers on Twitter, over 209,000 followers on Instagram at the time of this recording. How have you guys viewed age throughout life? We've done a lot of interviews and this comes up a lot. But we don't see it. Look, all of us are bound to grow older. It's completely inevitable. Unless something even more tragic happens to us in the meantime when we pass away before we ever get the chance. But just because we're growing older doesn't mean we have to give up on living out our dreams, even in the twilight of our lives. Take for instance the massive success of grime rappers Pete and Bass, both of whom are pushing the seven decade mark. Just for clarification, how old are you? I'm just over 70. I'm approaching 70 as well. <laughs> from the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These two grandads have already managed to notch up millions upon millions of views on YouTube with their biggest hit song seeing these two lovable enigmas spitting witty lyrics over some authentically raw beats. Over a relatively short span of time, Pete and Bass have proven to be a revelation to the music industry, but they're also extremely secretive about their past. Throughout the course of their careers, they've suggested various backstories to how they came to work together, as well as dropped hints about their former less than straight and narrow early lives. So we've reached out to them for some insider details to help put together as much of their remarkable story as possible. You guys have so many stories, so many things that you guys can tell that it would be hard. To, it, one would think it's an old man sport. Yeah, did you see yeah. him shoot that helicopter down? He was good. <laughs> <laughs> it's popping, guys. It's Marlon Palmer back in it again with a brand new video. This one taking a look at the come up of grime duo Pete and Bass. Here for you on Before They're Famous. These two are fantastic storytellers, so much so that it's nearly impossible to tell when they're being truthful. That being said, much of their past is shrouded in darkness, so we reached out to them to get some never before heard facts about their childhood that we can't wait to share with you guys. Is everything that they told us true? Who knows? But sure as hell is exciting. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at ThatDoomandFly to let me know what you think. And let's get into the story. All right, let's start by getting a few of the most basic facts about these two out of the way first. After all, most people seem to be confused about who is who when it comes to this duo, so let's clear that up right now. Oh, I'm Baz. And you're Pete? Yeah, I'm Pete, yeah. Oh, you figured it nice out. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> not just pretty faces. Clearly. Uh, clearly not. Bass was born Basil Belgrave on December 26, 1949 to his parents Barnaby and Olivia, while Pete was born Peter Bowditch on November 25, 1950 to parents Jonathan and Trina. Both of these gentlemen hailed from South London with Pete having gone on record saying that he was born in the district of Peckham. They done a tattoo yeah. on my leg and I'm not dropping my trousers. <laughs> Of I where I come from, and mm. it's Peckham Rye. Both men had close relationships with their fathers. Barnaby was a printer at a local newspaper called the Clitheroe Advertiser, and he taught Bass from a young age how to box while running a back garden bare knuckle boxing ring when his son was only a teenager. Of course, once the police found out about this, they shut it down right quick. R.I.P. Kimbo Slice, talking about backyard fights, that's my dog. Meanwhile, Pete's dad, Jonathan, was a platform porter for the Southeastern Railway, and he introduced his son to the Richardson family, one of the most notorious crime families to ever come out of the London area who would teach Pete the arts of racketeering, roller skating, and how to get girls. Well, the riches are very powerful because the riches, if they had anything, they had money. And money in itself is power. All this extracurricular activity that Pete was up to would facilitate him dropping out of school before he was a teenager. Meanwhile, Bass went on to attend Croydon High School, but at the age of 16, he got into a dispute with one of his teachers knocked them out with his bare knuckles and never came back. Whether or not this peek behind the curtain of their lives is true or simply creative invention on their part, it's hard to know. Both men are always hesitant to get into the details whenever their pasts are brought up. Were you involved in street life in those days? This might make it difficult to gauge their honesty, but one thing's for sure, these two, especially Bass, like to appear as if they're always up to something less than reputable. Bass is quite mysterious, isn't he? Yeah, it's Baz, I'm afraid. He's a um, very quiet man. What are you up to? Like, every time you get out of the car, like, what are you actually up to? Oh, it's, it's a bit if of this and that. We, not, let's talk about the music. There's even rumor going around that Bass used to sell drugs while working as a bouncer for a prominent London nightclub back in the 70s, making more money than you could possibly imagine while being protected at all times by the club owners who would never let him get into any trouble with the local law. Then as they entered their adult life, Pete took up a position as a local postman, worked on a couple local advertisements, and sold stolen cars on the side. And up from a corner shop. Oh, 
Bass, on the other hand, held down a job as a lawyer before serving time in the army and eventually becoming a piano teacher who just so happens to have skills with the trumpet as well. This is a musician. Uh, okay, okay. I, I can't even I can't even play a triangle. No. Well, I play oh, I play all sorts of things. Oh. I play the full. I play the piano, piano, oh, yeah. trumpet, anything with valves in it. So where did these two first meet? Well, it actually took them a long time to do so, despite both men growing up in relatively close proximity to one another. The legend goes that only a handful of years ago, Pete was working as a trading standards officer when he visited a shop in Greenwich High Road and stumbled upon Bass teaching piano in that same building. Ever since, these two have been the closest of friends. Oh, look at that, they met with music. They met with music, it's like a sign all right, now let's get into the most important stuff, their music. Pete was the first to become inspired at trying his hand at grime as a direct result of one of his six grandchildren, his granddaughter Lily, who introduced her grandpa to rap when she was only 13, and he was in his late 60s. Right, you've got to, got, you've got to sort of blame yeah, my yeah, granddaughter. Yeah, okay. Thank you, granddaughter. Yeah, no, we, we say thank you. we yeah. got to say thank you, Joe. After being forced to listen endlessly to hip-hop and rap, Pete found himself surprised by how much he began to enjoy it. Inspired by this late life discovery, Pete reached out to his good friend and musical savant, Bass, to convince him to team up and start making some grime tracks of their own. After encouraging Bass to listen to hip hop and R&B legends, Pete eventually wore his friend down, who despite the tough front he often puts up, was secretly eager to get back into the game. After all, Bass once told Modell Magazine, make sure you don't die with the music still in you. Many people do, unfortunately. People are either dead or alive, know what I mean? In my case, I'm gonna make bloody sure they know the difference. These guys always have bars, just always with the bars. Motivated to succeed, Pete and Bass began to write the lyrics to some original songs, leaning on their grandchildren when they needed to update slang words appropriately across a pretty wide generational divide. I had never seen people your age so well versed, so huh. with, such, with such a great grasp of the slang and the vernacular, while also infusing your own slang and vernacular. I love that. Why did you guys choose to do that? Well, that's our sort of um, mantra, if you like. We want we want to get ourselves in it and make the kids or the children or our friends or our people who are watching us understand us as well, because it's a different language at times. Yeah. Their grandkids also help them along with beats and production with Pete telling Culture Hub, they give us the beat and we provide the words. By late 2018, these two met an individual named Lordy who helped put them on the map and shared their skills with the world by releasing their very first song, Shut Your Mouth, on the YouTube channel Grime Report TV. Also, Five Pound Munch. The Five Pound Munch episode was lit too. This smash hit paved the way for their very first professional gig, which took place that same year in front of, well, only about 10 people at the graduate in Greenwich. But don't worry, these two have blown up huge and their later performances have been in pretty rowdy crowds in places like Camden Roundhouse, Manchester, Birmingham, Bristol, and a whole lot more cities. They've also continued to release songs on the GRM Daily YouTube channel that have kept them in the spotlight with tracks like Dents in a Pouget and Quick Little Freestyle, which quickly secured more than 1 million plays on both Spotify and YouTube. Do you have any future projects or anything coming up? We got Domination the, of yeah, the world. Yeah, we got the, the uh, Mix are coming up next week, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we're yeah, in this case, it's our Saint Day. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, mixed it's tape, mixed tape coming out on the twenty third of this month. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, mixed tape. Uh, nice. Do we have a title? Is there? Is there? An, is there? A That's what's cool. There's it's just called Quick Little Mixtape. More recently, they had been slated to continue taking over the world with their lads on tour into the fall of 2020. But with the coronavirus spreading like wildfire and these two firmly being in the high danger zone in terms of what would happen if they were to catch it, they postponed all performances until October of 2021. COVID for you lot, has it had a crazy effect? Like, are you lot still out and about? Obviously, following restrictions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. unfortunately, yeah, I've lost a few friends to it. As for the rest of the story and where their most recent hit songs like Old Estate and Golf might take them, well, that's a story for another time and another place. After all, this is before they're famous. What do you guys think of the secret lives of Pete and Bass? Are you surprised they value their privacy so highly? How much of what they told us do you believe is true? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to follow our series on Instagram at Before They're Famous to vote on who's next. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.